John DeBosi, welcome to The Generator. Thank you very much for the invitation. Now, you're here at the ECHO Forum 2009 talking about Aquadam. you want to just describe what Aquadam is for our listeners? Aquadam is a floating dam that we were designed to uh, uh, contain and store water in the ocean, floating two to five kilometers offshore to cities, close to cities. So what's the advantage of putting a dam in the ocean rather than having it in the hills? The, the advantage would be that uh, we have a chance to collect water from various sources. Instead of just relaying on rain, which on the worldwide basis everybody says, I'm waiting for the rain to come, and uh, if the rain falls in catchment areas with established dams, then we have the, rain, uh, the water. If it, if it misses, we don't have the water. We have a mobile unit, if you like, that uh, we have the option to collect the rain, uh, collect the storm water, we have opportunity for desalinating, and another aspect of it that we, in a fluid environment, we don't create a monstrous concrete dam, uh, we could float a, a bladder full of water down and park it next to the aquadam and have large quantities of water available. Listening to you describe it there, I um, think of the dam being higher than the city gives us the advantage of a natural gravity rainfall, but it That's also great. means we've lost we tend to think of collecting the water, using the water, and then disposing of the water. Yeah. At least your approach has the um, cyclic point of view that we need to move to if we're going to really start to recycle resources. Well, it, it is uh, more, more, more like a, a capture what you can. And uh, as I said earlier, that uh, the catchments don't catch all the stone water uh, because uh, the cities that we created uh, actually uh, changed the weather patterns. And instead of the water and the rain going all the way into the river system and catchment areas, where the dams are currently built on rivers, they actually rain more in the cities. So there's more rainfalls in those areas, and that water is totally lost, virtually just channeled out into the waterways in the ocean and we lose it. And that's what we should miss, uh, well, don't miss, and catch it. And then uh, we can store it in a, in a dam, clean it, and in the aquadam, the other advantage is that in the platform, we can use solar energy, wind energy, combination of uh, wave and tidal energy, and then we can uh, find that energy, green energy, to uh, clean the water, desalinate the water, and also pump it back into the cities. Our calculation is that actually the energy that we can generate on that platform is more than what we need. We can actually uh, channel energy back into the city. Fantastic. Whereabouts are you in the cycle of coming up with a visionary idea at developing prototypes and getting a commercial sort of We've reality. been working on this for about four years now and we have a, a stage where uh, we've well, tested a small prototype. We, we're building a larger scale of about 30 meters and uh, probably that will take about another eight months to test it with uh, uh, CSI or scientists and uh, University of uh, Griffiths University in, in Salisbury on the Gold Coast. And uh, well, once we know the facts and uh, well, we also uh, identifying a lot of companies here that have expertise in how to actually position and stabilize a floating dam in the ocean, uh, then, we, uh, then we can build a large uh, structure which would be about four kilometers by two, uh, what, what I believe it should I be. I imagine there are opportunities to combine it with wave and tide power generators. That's correct, to yes. Power and, and we're talking to those companies that have wind energy, wave energy uh, techniques. Uh, well, and we're talking to a German company and a Chinese company that have solar technology. Uh, well, now, well, the interesting point about it is that uh, all these wind farms and solar farms that people talk about that we should establish, it's always in my neighborhood. And uh, well, you know, we're taking up more and more of land, we're cutting down trees, actually to put a wind farm up. What we're proposing is that we have a platform, not in my neighborhood, not uh, well, away from the residential areas, where uh, it doesn't bother anybody, and the energy, the energy uh, generation possibility is exponentially bigger. Yes, well, there's a lot of surface area. That's right. Seventy percent is covered with water. And are you having any interest from governments? The Australian government, for example, has always been very conservative about adopting no, new well, ideas. Unfortunately, well, not not much at all. We have more interest from overseas. Uh, and uh, well, it's the same story what I had with Atari, so I think nobody wanted to do anything about it until somebody was interested from overseas. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, we have, so what sort of countries? We have uh, interest from uh, uh, Dubai, we have interest from uh, 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 California. A Japanese company came to us uh, uh, that can you uh, use this platform to grow vegetables on it? Uh, so uh, you know, that gave me another idea. 
instead of taking the water to the farm, I'm taking the farm to the water. Well, both um, Japan and Dubai have been uh, very inventive and creative for quite different reasons, yeah. haven't they? Now, you're not new to the world of innovation. You've gone through this cycle mm. of taking something from idea to uh, reality before. Yes, I'm an overnight success <laughs> after 10,000 years. <laughs> an overnight success after 10,000 years? That's say. right, yes. <laughs> so just uh, tell me a little bit about your previous mm. The, the previous previous technology was the tiny suckling, and uh, it took me quite a long time to uh, get it right. And uh, uh -huh. the idea came that uh, we should make something from the product. You know, it's just like here today, we're talking about recycling, but nobody nobody says what we should make out of the product. Uh -huh. So uh, uh, other people, other companies like Dunlop, for instance, they spend a lot of money and they uh, put uh, a lot of effort into recycling tires because they wanted to make tires. My approach was different. I take raw material, which is virtually indestructible, and I made something else out of it. And I can make oil, I can make charcoal out of it, and I worked out how to reorganize rubber. So we commercialized so, it. So now. when you say the product was almost indestructible, is that the tyre that's indestructible or the rubber? Both. Uh, well, oh. the, the, obviously the tyre is, is a sophisticated piece of it. <laughs> but the material used in the tyre is a very high tensile, very strong material. Oh. And uh, if you virtually dump a tyre in the... Uh, in the backyard, for hundreds of years it won't decompose. Which means that a tyre is fairly hard to pull apart. That's so right, I imagine yeah. that was one yeah. of your major challenges. Yes. And, uh, and I developed uh, uh, several uh, uh, machines for that purpose, to uh, uh, take the tyre, uh, separate the components uh, and uh, have clean components that goes into uh, value added production. And for instance, when I make the oil, other companies say that I can burn the tyre and a lot of oil would come out of it. But it's contaminated. Yeah. I have clean rubber going into the system, and the oil that comes out of it, and the char that comes out of it is clean. So and are you able to recycle all the metals that are in a tire? Every, every 100 percent is recycled. The metal is recycled as, at the moment reinforcement for concrete. Same same thing for the fiber. We can use uh, the fiber for concrete reinforcement. I can turn it into plastic, or alternatively, I can make uh, diesel out of it. Uh, the rubber I can make reorganized rubber, perfectly comparable to virgin rubber that that you use in any, any uh, rubber industries, and uh, uh, oil and charcoal. And charcoal is another uh, aspect of my technology that we're looking at to incorporate charcoal into the soil. Well, it's fantastic to make such an innovative mind than someone who's managed to follow it through to success. Yeah, nice. Thanks very much for coming on the show. You're welcome. Very good. So where are you going to show this? I will be, I will cut it a little bit.